I'll quickly go through a couple of slides just to show that this is the demo topology. Uh, I have a SRX device and that is connected to a SRX hub and the blue lines represent the overlay tunnels from the uh, spoke to the hub. Okay, so this is the very simplistic uh, demo topology and uh, control sd -WAN or CSO, Control Service Orchestration, the software itself, that is actually hosted on the cloud. Uh, I will also have some sites which are like uh, what I call this multi-homing because it is connected to more than one hub. Okay. And uh, essentially just to show that uh, it can go to uh, connect with multiple different hubs. E each of these devices can also cluster. So each of these can actually be a dual CPE also. Okay, so this is the very high level topology diagrams. And then these are the things that I am planning to cover today. Um, mostly starting off with application visibility because that is the key thing about SD-WAN that you identify the applications before taking an informed decision as to what to do with the applications. Next, we will see the intent-based SD-WAN policy management. That is where we will actually create some policies. We will see how to set the SLAs in CSO and see some of the cool things about what happens when SLA is breached. Then we will see some security. I will show the site provisioning workflow. It's a very simple workflow that has very few steps. And uh, then I'll try to show some uh, of the other things like the dynamic meshing between sites. Okay. And uh, finally, uh, show some role-based access control uh, related, multi-tenancy related capabilities. So let me uh, end the presentation here. And go to the... That's fine. So I'll just log into my CSOs. So I'm just logging into a couple of different windows. Uh, so I have now logged into a CSO, and here you will see that there are different contexts here. So first, let me show one of the tenants. So this particular tenant uh, is called the product tour. So essentially, uh, just carrying off from where Tony left, that there is a, a trial thing, and users can easily actually register and get to the website. So this is the product tour. And <coughs> here, once the user logs in, uh, if they like are there for the first time and want to see what is going on, you can actually open intro here. It shows like the stuff explains a little bit of it, about it, like how to browse through and what to see where. So you can actually browse through the intro thing, or you can skip it if you are an advanced user. And essentially, once uh, you land on this dashboard, you will realize, first of all, with your own login, it will be empty. So the dashboard is user customizable. It's different for every user. Okay, so you can drag and drop the widgets that are available here. So if I just drag and drop a widget, and I can set the timeline here, I can actually select what type of graph I want to see, whether it's a bar graph or a time series graph or something. So I can arrange and uh, design my own dashboard. So uh, the dashboard actually gives an enterprise-wide view of what is actually happening in the whole enterprise. For example, which are the top applications which are consuming the maximum amount of bandwidth? That may be the first question that the administrator might want to see. Uh, so you can see here that these are some of the applications consuming the maximum amount of bandwidth. Who are the users who are consuming that amount of bandwidth? So the top sources. Then, for example, for some specific branches, you may want to view how is the throughput. So this shows the throughput graph, like in the last one hour. So you can actually get an overview of the system right from the dashboard widgets. Now, 
Moving on, if from the dashboard widgets, you can get to the monitoring tab, which shows much more information uh, about the uh, sites. Okay, so here we see that there is a global topology here. So there is a map, and these are all different sites. So let me uh, zoom in a little bit. Okay, it seems a little bit cluttered, but if I zoom in, that is where you see that there are a lot of sites here in the US, in Europe, and all these places. And then there are some which are hubs, and then there are some which are sites, okay. And you can actually see the top applications running there if there are any outstanding alarms. So the nice thing is that, I mean, uh, if, you, if there are any alarms, for example, if there are any minor alarms, it will actually show up with yellow. If there are any major alarms, it will show up, the site itself will change color. Okay, so you will get to see that instantly from the geo map. Like, okay, there is some problem with some site in probably North America. Can I ask okay. a, just a, yeah, sure. like a really bad question? Mm -hmm. Mobile friendly? So we are actually uh, going there. So this one also you can open on mobile, okay. and you can see that. This doesn't look good. But <laughs> yeah, but there is a mobile version that is actually coming up. Okay. And you would be able to see that. I know it's a, I, yes. that's like kind of a lame question, but it's a it's a real question. Yeah, so we actually have an app that will work. yeah. So okay. there there is a it, there is a version mobile version that is coming up actually. I think the key point here is that you know. With Dashboard and the overview, you get an enterprise-wide view. Yeah. If you know any links are not performing, any sites are down, right there, uh, you know, and in one screen, right? Yes. So this provides the very high-level overview, and then for any of these sites, uh, user can easily click on more information to go and see the details about that particular site. Okay. So you'll see that we moved to the resources tab automatically from the monitoring tab. And in the resources tab, if I just go there and click on site management, I'll be able to see all these sites actually here. Okay. So this is a listing of all the sites. It shows that these sites are provisioned, uh, operational state is up. And then if we actually click on one of these sites, uh, we get to see the details about these sites. Okay, and like what are the devices? Okay, and then uh, which are the LAN segments which are connected? So we can see much more details about these sites. So for example, uh, from the uh, resources site management, we can actually see the number of devices connected here. Yeah, so here we can see that some devices, some sites have four devices. So what are these? Let me click on one of these and we can see that there are associated devices connected here. Okay, so there are like a couple of access points and there is uh, one switch here. So EX device connected to SRX 345 and a couple of access points. We can actually go and see the EX device, configure the EX device, and then we can actually cross-launch the MIST uh, portal, and it automatically does this uh, context switching to that particular access point. So this was the question earlier about the EX and the MIST together. Yeah. So it automatically goes there, and you can here then get information about that particular access point and all these applications and all. And those same applications are what you will able, be able to see from here. So if I click on this site, and you see that this site is actually multi-homing to two different hubs, okay, and these hubs uh, it has got two connections, and these are the different applications, the top applications that are running for that site. Okay, so this is what you get in the product tour. So once you go there, you'll be able to go there and see the various top applications, enterprise-wide view, and then customers can actually configure their own systems and know like what to expect, what can they see from the system. Okay. I will also go to another tenant.
So I'll quickly log in to another tenant, uh, which I'll be primarily using for my demo today. So because I have a set of devices connected there, and what I'm going to do is, <coughs> I am going to go to the SD-WAN workflow, which is the most important end of interest here. And here you see that I am now in Enterprise 101. Okay, earlier I was in the product tour tenant because I am actually a super administrator of the system. So there are different levels of hierarchy and the tenant administrator, once they log in, they will be able to see just that particular tenant. Whereas the service provider administrator, which is the role that I have right now, I'll be able to see all the tenants that are under me. Okay, so here, moving on, I'll quickly go to the SD-WAN perspective. So on this particular tenant, if I go to monitor tab and I want to see what is happening, so this is like, my topology here, I have sites New York connected to a hub in Dallas. I have sites Los Angeles connected to Dallas. I have Seattle connected to Denver. Some of the sites like Chicago and Atlanta are connected to both the hubs. Okay, so they are doing multi-homing here. And there are some site-to-site um, -site tunnels like New York is connected directly to Atlanta. Okay, so this is the scenario here. And in this scenario, if I want to see what is happening for this particular enterprise, I see that these are the top applications that are there for this particular enterprise. And now if I want to see what happened in like the last one hour, then it will show me that these are the top applications that are running in the last one hour. Now if I want to drill down and see what is happening, say for example in New York, and if I click OK, so then it shows me that this is what is happening in the New York branch site. So then I can see if I go to the grid view, it will actually get me uh, the top applications that are running, the top users who are consuming the maximum amount of bandwidth, what are the type of applications. For example, there are like some web category, infrastructure category. What are the characteristics of those applications? So, and then it does a risk profiling also of those applications. So we see all these different details here. Now let's say you, we have identified that some users are consuming a lot of bandwidth. And we want to see what are those users actually doing. For example, this user seems to be consuming a lot of bandwidth. Okay, so I can go to the grid view and find out, okay, so one particular user has consumed like 11 GB of data in the last one day. And then if I want to drill down and see what are the applications that the user has been using, so it shows me those details. So this is like getting and drilling down into each and every branch site, each and every user. And you can actually see the username if it's integrated with the Active Directory. Then we want to now. So I just want to. I just want to highlight. This kind of highlights the, the application visibility aspect and, and the, the 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 visibility that we provide for the whole enterprise of what's actually running on the network. And that's really enabled by the application awareness of the SD WAN solution that I talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Particularly as the service provider admin, mm -hmm. whatever level that you're in, yes. the graphs that are showing like the total bandwidth and everything like that is specific to that level. Specific to that level. Yes. Thought so. Just wanted yes. to validate. Yep. So uh, yes. Yeah. So it's only for that this particular tenant. Yes. So now let's see the SD WAN policy management part because this is the key part about CSO. So here now if I go to SD WAN policy. We'll see that there are some policies that are set here. We'll get to the policy part, but before policy, we need to decide now what to do with these applications. So for example, option one, we can go to the local breakout. Okay, stuff just goes directly to internet. So that is one option. Then we can say that, okay, I have some preferences. I want to take my traffic, some of the applications, which I think are important, which are going probably to the data center, or maybe to the internet through the hub, I will take those through the MPLS link. 
I want to prefer my MPLS link, or I want to prefer my internet link. Okay, so I want to set some static rules by which I want to say that these applications should preferably use in internet, and if internet is not available, only then it goes to MPLS. And then the final thing is the dynamic SLA, where I actually set a SLA where I say that this application must be able to run within these parameters. What are those parameters? Something like packet loss, latency, jitter. So those, that is the final level where we can say that actually the SLA should be set. So here, for example, we have breakout profiles. So we can say that we create a profile, the traffic should go to the internet or the traffic should go to the cloud security on Zscaler. Okay, so we can create profiles here. Similarly, path-based steering profiles. We can say that something should go to the MPLS uh, path or the internet path. And then this is the part where we actually set a SLA. Let's say we have some collaboration apps which are important. And then we want to say that this is a new SLA that I want to set for the collaboration set of applications, for my voice and video set of applications. So voice and video is automatically classified with the class of service parameters. Okay, so this is one key thing about Juniper's SD-WAN, where this is associated with the DSCP encoding at the backend automatically. And here, I can use the recommended settings. Just to, oh, sorry, just yeah. to double click on that, right? So this is an important point. We actually enable you to reclassify incoming traffic with a specific underlay quas parameter and map that into the overlay quas. And then we maintain the underlay quas going out into the WAN on the outer side of the tunnel as well, right? So we, we make sure that quality of service is maintained from the LAN to the WAN to the overlay based on the SLA class. Yeah, and here the SLA parameters, the threshold configurations, we can use the recommended one if we are not sure as to what to set. Otherwise, we can set some custom parameters. Okay, let's say that I want to set something like packet loss 3%, uh, jitter maybe uh, 10, and the round trip time maybe 100. Okay, so I can actually set my custom values. And then I can say that the SLA breach will happen if all these parameters are breached. Okay, that is an AND condition. Or if any of these parameters are breached. That is an OR condition. Okay, so it's like if round trip time is breached only, even then it's considered a breach. Or if all the three have to be violated in order to be considered a SLA breach. So we can define that and then we can actually set application quality of experience sampling rate. So what the SLA probing does, this is where the actual probing comes into picture. We can say that sample 5% of the traffic. So that will actually sample 5% of the real Zoom or Skype or uh, WebEx traffic. And then we can say how many times the violation should happen before we consider to move the application from the affected link to the better link. So let's say that the violation should happen at least twice over a period of, let's say, at least three seconds. Okay, so over a period of three seconds, if the violation happens at least twice, only then move the application over. Otherwise, keep the application as it is because it's a brownout condition. It's not exactly that the link has come down completely. If the link comes down completely, then you, the application will move over anyways. If there is huge amount of packet loss, the application will move over anyways. It is a brownout condition, a latency condition, a, a small amount of packet loss condition, which is what we want to detect and then move the application over selectively. Then we just click the SLA and make it part of a policy. So policy creation is very simple. We just say that, okay, 
Sorry, Stan. So I just yep. want to highlight. So, so what we're sort of going through is that we allow a very unparalleled level of granularity in the policy configuration. We also have standard policies, right? But what you'll find is, is a lot of uh, other solutions in the market just has high, low, medium, right? Yeah. And you don't get to define what is high, low, medium. We actually let you define, we have high, low, medium, but if you want to set a, set a custom class, we allow you to do that as well, right? Yeah. And creating a policy is very easy. So we uh, just give a name, we can give a description and all. Source, now let's say we want it for all the sites on the Pacific coast, let's say. So this is a site group. Okay, so all the branch sites which are on the Pacific coast, we can actually do that all in one go. All the sites that are in the US, all in one go. Or you want to selectively choose some sites, that is also fine. Okay, you can selectively pick and choose the number of sites, and then <coughs> applications. So here also we can use a group. Let's say all the collaboration applications. So if I just say CSO, and all the collaboration applications are grouped together in some collaboration group, you can define your own group. You can just say that, okay, these are the applications that I use, so I will just prioritize those. You can just actually say, for example, in your organization, you're just using WebEx. No need to actually select the other stuff. You just say WebEx. Okay, and then you choose the SLA here. So here we see that, okay, this is the SLA, and then we click Save, and then we can deploy. Okay, so this is how we actually create the policies, and it's absolutely, uh, I mean, uh, what the administrators can do in a few clicks. So with any of these groups, particularly I was thinking the, the geographic-based ones, mm -hmm. is there a hierarchy to it? Like if I had my West Coast ones, mm -hmm. could I further go down to West Coast, California, oh, yes, West yes. Coast, Washington? It's, you can define groups in any way, and you can have a, any number of sites in that. But so this is completely logical. <coughs> it will just, the system is going to find out, okay, US complete, Pacific is within US complete, so if you select Pacific, it is finally going to see that, okay, so many sites are within Pacific. If you select Pacific and US, so it is going to still see so many sites, so it's just going to actually push it to devices, finally. So it's, uh, the system will actually figure it out. So you can have any kind of uh, understanding on the Okay, system. so it's really up to you to create the hierarchy, it's not visual. No, no, no. it's just a simple logical naming con uh, convention, so that you can easily deploy to many devices. So then you can easily deploy. So now what happens when you deploy, and then we, I already have some applications, like for example, for New York site for Los, and Los Angeles, some important applications like say SharePoint, Concord, YouTube, here which are running, and then Outlook, and then Google Hangouts, Zoom, Skype. So there are some things which I have already defined. And what I have is a proxy browser. So this is a proxy browser where I actually, <coughs> connecting on the LAN side of New York. So what happens here, whatever I do here, essentially lands up as New York traffic. Okay, so this is, a, uh, this is the browser, and let's say that I'll go and upload some uh, file just to generate some uh, traffic and maybe upload a big file here. So, so here I have started a file upload. So what has essentially started now is that there is traffic going on and traffic is passing through the SD-WAN site. Essentially traffic is passing the uh, New York site. Okay, so now what I am going to do is I am going to actually introduce some uh, some breach in the SLA by introducing some amount of delay. Okay, so I have some delay VMs and all configured. So what I am going to do is, so this is my kind of uh, Ubuntu VM through which the traffic passes through. So what I'm planning to do here is just introduce a significant amount of delay. And 
this is actually the site here. So it immediately sees this huge amount of delay. Okay, because I introduced that significant delay in the network. And you'll see that it actually says that it is trying to meet this business SLA. And now the full SLA is actually violated. Okay. So uh, here, once we do this, then traffic actually figures out that the probing mechanism figures out that there is a huge amount of latency in the network, and it is going to then make a change in the path. Okay. So we see that now is SLA is again met. So what has actually happened, I just wanted to show a little bit of that, just to show, because here it appears very quickly. And <coughs> yeah. So here we see that a switch has happened, and then certain applications moved over. Not all the applications move over, OK? So the only those applications which, for which we defined the SLA, so those applications move over. So if I go to the application SLA performance, so here I can actually see some things called scores. So we scored a site. We scored WAN links. OK, so we provide some automatic scoring mechanism by which we say that this number of sessions were actually affected out of total so many thousands and millions of sessions. OK, so based upon that, we see New York is still doing good. Uh, and the site SLA performance in the last one hour is actually decent. So here, all these different applications has been running. So if I just go to the graph view, so it shows us a scatter plot of the different applications. And anything to the right is actually doing good and is green. OK. So here we see the WAN link, the overlay performances. OK. And we can actually drill down to that application to find out how that application itself is doing. So this is the score of that particular application. So we see here that SharePoint is the application, and it's trying to meet business SLA. So this is the session that is going on, or the set of sessions. So there has been no packet loss. This is the, this is the SLA breach. OK, and the target was 150 milliseconds, whereas the actual round trip time was 509 dot something. OK, so the application moves over seamlessly to the alternate links, which provides better uh, SLA. And uh, that is what is brought about by the dynamic SLA setting. OK. So now, uh, one of the questions that came up was how security works along with all of this, right? So security works seamlessly with this. So we have the firewall policy settings here. And if I go to the all site firewall policy here, you see here that I have set some generic policies here. Like these are department based firewall policies, and I have also got site based policies. Like if I say that for New York and Los Angeles sites, Facebook and Twitter are blocked. OK, whereas I am allowing everything else, and I have also got UTM enabled. OK, so UTM invariably means web filtering, antivirus content filtering. So those things also, see here, the upload is actually still going on. The internet is actually slow here. So the web filtering, I have blocked some certain things. For example, I have blocked some shopping websites. So if I just try to open some shopping website, I'll see that it has been blocked. So this is what the user, the end user, is going to see. And it's very easy to modify that. We can easily go to the web filtering profile. And inside the web filtering profile, if I click Edit, this is the message that I am seeing right now. And I have just shopping blocked. I can edit here. And I can essentially include any of these uh, groups here. 
<coughs> I can deploy. Okay, so it's pretty easy to make changes to the firewall policy, and it's seamlessly integrated to the SD-WAN policies. Here are a couple of other things. For example, as soon as we go to SD-WAN, and I mean branches are open to more threats. And these days, users get a lot of these uh, phishing emails. So here is a, like a phishing email, lifetime Uber rides for free. And maybe somebody goes and clicks on that. And actually, it's taking the user to a malicious website. OK, it tries to download something. But the user is protected from that. So this is also like automatically antivirus in play. OK, so security part is here and now let me quickly move over and show very yeah, quickly the site uh, onboarding process the five six minutes Sorry. five minutes okay five, five minutes. Sorry for the rush no so uh, I'll quickly show the site onboarding process uh, maybe I'll also do one thing uh, I'll show the topology once and I will show for example Seattle when Seattle talks with Los Angeles, it essentially has to go through th two of the hubs, Denver hub and Dallas hub. So that introduces delay in the network. So for example, here, Seattle, if I just ping Los Angeles, I'll see that there is a big amount of latency, like 16 milliseconds latency between Seattle to Los Angeles because it is going through the two <coughs> hubs. Okay, so we will see that the tunnel between the two sites come up automatically. I'll just leave the pings running here, and I will show the site provisioning in the meantime. So which is the SD-WAN site provisioning. So let's say we are setting up a branch in Las Vegas. And we choose that the branch is a SD-WAN branch. We choose which hubs it needs to connect to. Connect to. So it can connect to maybe Dallas as the primary hub and Denver as the secondary hub. It's optional, whichever uh, you can connect to one or you can connect to more. You can choose the address and contact information. These are all optional parameters here. In the advanced configuration, you can choose like which particular time zone it connects to. So I just say, okay, Los Angeles. And then we select SRX as SD-WAN CPE, okay, because this is the SRX. If I just enter, let's say, some serial number, here I'm just entering an imaginary one. And then here, there are these options, like for example, for LTE, uh, what kind of link it is. We just need to identify the link. And then let's say if I enter this, and then I can enter other values here. So. Here the PPPoE settings come up, and let's this, say this is actually pretty unique. Uh, we actually do underlay integration with DSL as well, uh, which is not available with many other op options as well. So, yeah. so we can choose these parameters here, and let's say the next one is uh, let's say MPLS, and that one is static IPs. So I can set static IPs and all. So uh, we can set something for advanced settings here, or we can optionally go to the next step. And, okay, I'll just change this to Ethernet. And uh, we can add some LAN segments initially if we want to, or we can add those later on. I mean, essentially, all our inputs are done. Will so, it auto-learn if you don't add those LAN segments? So if we do not have those LAN segments, we will eventually we can add those uh, anytime later on. Um, the thing is, uh, all the security policies and all those things will also, it can be also deployed automatically. Say for example, a LAN segment actually belongs, you can make it part of a department. And then, if the department has a policy, like for example, a department corporate, it has got a policy that allow internet, but block Facebook. So that will also be automatically deployed as soon as the site is provisioned, instantly after the provisioning of the site. So let, that is let, the advantage of having LAN here. Yeah, let me just add, I mean, you need to have a LAN or VLAN specified. I mean, uh, it won't auto-learn, yeah, <laughs> right? Well, uh, you, you need a port, but what he's saying is you don't have to do it on site onboarding, you can do it later, at a later yeah. time. You don't have to add it on site. Yeah. 
And these are all the inputs. Essentially, you can also download something as JSON. If you have a lot of sites, you can use a site templates workflow to upload many sites. I, I just added one seri single serial number. You can add many of those if all your sites have a similarity of number of links or type of WAN links. Yeah, so, so this is about like a four-step workflow, as you can see, to bring a site on board. Uh, yeah. Maybe you can see if the, 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 your VPN yeah, has the come VPN. up or not. And, uh, I know we're so, a little bit short on time, so. Yeah, so you see that, actually I'll close the pings. Uh, so the ping times, if you see now, is suddenly very less. That is because at one point of time, it made this transition. You see, suddenly from 15 or 16 milliseconds, it suddenly went to one or two milliseconds. And in the background, what has happened is, you'll see something new on the map, that Seattle is connected to Los Angeles directly. So this is what actually happened. And this is the ICMP traffic that you see here. This is the ICMP that was actually triggered that. And it saw that the sites were connecting. Okay. Thank you, Sayan. Uh, 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 <laughs> how, how long does it nor I mean, that took about two minutes. How yeah. long does it normally take for a site to decide to come up? A side to side tunnel, yeah, it, it takes about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah about a few minutes, yeah. Is that regardless of how much traffic's traversing it? Yeah, like it's. If you would run a bigger payload, would that have made a difference? No, no. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll finish off with some reporting. So we have security and SD WAN reporting, and we can just, we have a lot of predefined ones, and we have a lot of capability for uh, custom reporting also. Uh, so I have just generated some reports, uh, and I'll just show that what you can actually see, all those applications, top countries, maybe if anything is blocked. So then if, you, if there is a brownout condition, you get an enterprise-wide view, like top sites not meeting SLA, top sites meeting SLA with switching. So you get to see all these details in a nice report. And the reports can be emailed as well. Yeah. So that's nice.